So um, I'll speak mostly, uh, I think, um, about beef cattle. And the reason for that is that beef cattle is the uh, second largest agricultural uh, enterprise and uh, second to soybeans. And then we have poultry, uh, dairy is around here, and then we have swine. So beef cattle is the, uh, in terms of uh, uh, protein is, uh, animal protein is the, the most important uh, industry in, in Brazil. Um, uh, Rodrigo mentioned a little bit about that is, is Brazil is the second uh, largest producer uh, in the world, second to the United States, and then the largest uh, exporter uh, in the world. And it's about 10% of the GDP. So uh, that gives you an idea of the importance of the agricultural sector in Brazil. And uh, as we are mostly a tropical country, uh, it's mainly based on, uh, on pasture and in the same uh, breeds. Nevertheless, uh, the use of taurine breeds is uh, uh, it's very important. And, and it, it, it's uh, mostly used in crossbreeding with the, the indicine cows to improve early mature and meat quality uh, of these populations um, in the whole region of Brazil. So for example, Angus uh, in, in 2020 uh, sold 7 million uh, straws of semen just in one year. Uh, now, the, the use of a uh, uh, high percentage of taurine uh, blood in most of the country is limited through uh, ticks. Rodrigo mentioned a little bit about that and other external parasites and also uh, the heat uh, tolerance. So uh, we have currently in place uh, genomic selection for all beef, uh, uh, important beef breeds uh, several uh, breeding programs we have in the country. And uh, for example, just for uh, Nelar, we have already more than uh, 300,000 uh, genotypes. And uh, uh, Angus, uh, Brangos, Bradford, uh, all important uh, relevant breeds have already genomic selection in place in the country. The model that the producers access the technology uh, in most cases are through the breed association. So we have organized uh, breed associations for each uh, breed or set of breeds. And uh, for example, we have ABCZ, which is the, uh, the Brazilian Zebu uh, Breeders Association. And uh, generally they have the historical data, the phenotypes, the reference population that the animals with uh, phenotypes and genotypes, uh, Alona mentioned a little bit about the model of genomic selection in the beginning of this section. And, and, and then uh, the breed association also have the genotypes. And, and then uh, there are companies uh, like New Gene, uh, Zoetis, that they do the genotypes. So the, the, the producers send the, the DNA to the uh, genotyping companies, they do the genotyping, and then they send information to the breed associations. And then they often have a provider, a genomic evaluation provider, for example, Embrapa is a genomic evaluation provider. And uh, uh, we generally use the single step model, uh, which combines pedigree phenotypes and uh, markers uh, in a single uh, step evaluation to provide the GBVs for selections. And the interesting feature of this model is this, uh, selected animals get phenotypes, they, they are uh, fed back to the reference population that is managed by the breed association and that improves accuracy, currently improve, uh, constantly improve accuracy of uh, genomic predictions. Here, just an example that we did uh, uh, with Angus, but it's done for, for, all, the, for all breeds, uh, uh, is that we get uh, higher accuracies. These are BIF accuracies, uh, higher accuracies using genomic 
selection than prediction of selection. So we can uh, move forward faster uh, with the selection of uh, all breeds here uh, in Brazil. And as it happens all over the world. Uh, we focus on new and important economically relevant traits that are not currently in our breeding programs. For example, the, the tick uh, resistance. So ticks are the uh, most damaging parasite all over the world. 80% of the cattle is uh, affected by ticks and uh, estimated loss go up to $30 billion per year, $3 billion just in Brazil. We have demonstrated uh, through uh, validation that the difference of using high uh, resistance to low resistance sires, this is with, with Bradford cattle, we use them in uh, F1 uh, crosses, uh, cows that were Nalar crossed to Angus or Senapol, and we observed a reduction of one third in the tick load of their cats. So using right high resistance bulls would reduce in one third the tick loads of the offspring. We are also looking at uh, feed efficiency and uh, greenhouse emissions. This is uh, very keen. We have a uh, methane uh, 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 reduction uh, effort in place in Brazil. And we do that in feedlot uh, central station tests. Uh, we have already in the market uh, bulls with a genomic evaluation for beef uh, breeds since uh, 2017. Uh, and so this is available for producers through uh, auctions uh, all over the country. We also have sire summers that is another source where breeders can access the information. Uh, Rodrigo mentioned about the, our first sire summer in 2012, but then we have for dairy, for uh, zebu, and also last year uh, for Angus in, in Brazil. So all breeds, producers can access the technology through sire summers for AI bulls or through actions to uh, the pasture uh, cleanup bulls. Uh, we also been involved uh, uh, for the traits that are very difficult and costly to measure, like, uh, for example, tick resistance, but that's, that's also valid for methane emission, feed efficiency, uh, other uh, disease traits. Uh, we've been involved in combining data from different countries. I think this is very important. Uh, here is an example that a uh, work that we did with Australia and uh, South Africa. Uh, combining seven uh, different breeds and uh, producing a, a multi-trade, uh, uh, multi-country uh, genomic selection for, uh, for tick uh, resistance. Um, so if we look at the beef sector, and this is valid uh, across the world, uh, genomic selection will not do a big uh, difference for traits that we can measure in animals before selection, like body weights, body gains, uh, body measurements. It will be useful for traits that are more costly, like carcass traits uh, by ultrasound, or sex-limited traits like heifer pregnancy, early, early puberty. But Really, the big difference that the producers can get value uh, from genomic selection in the beef industry is from uh, new traits, traits that are very important economically, but are not currently uh, in the breeding programs or in the breeding objectives because they are difficult to improve by traditional methods like feed efficiency, uh, disease resistance, longevity, uh, how often a cow will deliver a calf and how heavy it will be, and also product quality. So th those are the most important traits uh, for, for that will benefit from genomic selection. And, and uh, to finish my quick presentation here, uh, it's very important for countries that are, I mean, in the process of implementing and developing strong reference populations is to collect uh, large uh, and uh, relevant data sets. And the way we 
we are doing here in Brazil is when we, it goes to disease adaptation and reproduction, developing farm protocols and training people, technicians to do the collection on farm. And for traits like feed efficiency, greenhouse emissions and meat quality doing central uh, station tests. So that's the way to generate the phenotypes. We've been uh, doing funding from, uh, to start the process using uh, research projects, local inter international funding agency, and then partnership with private companies like Illumina or others that they, they can give support in, in the beginning to develop the reference populations. And it's very important to have vi viable uh, business models that reduce the cost for the producers once we have the product in the market. And that is done by joint uh, ordering genotypes through uh, combining several breeders in the breed associations and also combining data from several countries to uh, have larger reference populations. When you combine uh, different uh, populations, you need to have high density uh, genotypes. And that's important to use with the technique called imputation of uh, genotypes. And uh, well, what are the main advantages that producers are gaining? Of course, effective selection for traits uh, related to tropical adaptation and production, traits that are sometimes already in the breeding program, but that they can move faster, but uh, particularly development of new distinguished uh, lineages of cattle. Uh, we've been working here to develop Taurine breeds adapted to the tropical production. I think that can be a big uh, uh, distinguishment for the Brazilian uh, beef uh, sector. So we are, uh, I mean, showing that to the producers so that they can uh, seek that path and uh, have a, com uh, a competition advantage in that way. That was my short uh, presentation about the, the producer's uh, uh, view. Uh, as uh, Alona mentioned at the beginning, I work for the Brazilian uh, Agricultural Research Corporation. We have this international website. You can uh, see the publications there. And I thank you very much. We are uh, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, that just was interesting. Um, we have a few questions. Uh, first one is uh, how government uh, is involved uh, in the process of uh, introducing uh, genomic selection to the market? Uh, does it finance uh, this uh, technology implementations uh, uh, from the government side? Yeah. So uh, I think there are two main uh, ways. One is uh, 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 through funding uh, research agencies, uh, so research projects that are used at the beginning to develop the reference population so that the, it's a public investment, but also uh, government is giving uh, support to subsidize genotypes at the beginning of the uh, establishment of uh, the breeding uh, program. So sometimes uh, uh, breed association uh, uh, with the Ministry of Agriculture, they will partially fund the genotyping so that the, 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 the producers will assess, access the technology at a lower cost at the beginning until they are comfortable and they see the results and then they, they can pay in full for the cost of the technology. Uh, do you have uh, such financing programs now or are they already over? No, uh, I mean, uh, the last year, the, for example, the, the, the Brazilian Zebu uh, Association uh, got a, a large grant to, to, to fund uh, the, the, the program and they, they are seeking to get to at least half a million genotypes uh, this year. Uh, I was impressed by the Indian size of the funding, the government funding. Yeah, it, it's too. not that big. It's not that big, certainly here in, in, in Brazil. Okay, thank you, Fernando. Uh, and uh, other questions uh, I would like you to ask. I would like to ask of you uh, is uh, how 
uh, do you collect phenotypes? As far as I know, uh, a lot of your cattle is grassing and uh, how it is possible to make farmers uh, collect correct genotypes uh, and send them to the associations? Well, yeah, we have, uh, uh, I think, the large uh, farms, but uh, all of them, they have management centers, so the, the cattle is uh, fetch and, and then they, they, they collect the data. And, and we have, and we identify particular farms that are, are I mean, more suitable to have high technology. And then those are the ones providing the specialized data. And I'm, when I say that it's like, for example, with the peak resistance, there are some farms that they, they also have central stations within the farm to do the feed efficiency. Uh, of course, uh, for example, methane emissions are in research uh, institutions, but uh, several farms have the capability to collect uh, uh, specialized uh, phenotypes. And then, uh, I mean, you, you, you do the, the data collection to develop the reference population and then other farms that are not able to collect the data, they, they can benefit from genomic selection just using the, the genotyping. Great, thank you very much uh, for your speech and uh, for the answers. Uh, uh, that was really interesting.